Airbus A330neo vs A321XLR. Both are pitched as Airbus is offering in the so-called middle of the market. How big is the gap? Before you find out, if you are new here, a warm welcome and do subscribe for more great aerospace videos on the way. Also, be sure to check out the official new aerospace productions Instagram page at aviationflat 50 A link is in the description and comments below. Performance The A330-900 has a range of 6,200 nautical miles with 242 tons of takeoff weight and seats 306 2 class. The A321XLR flies 4,700 nautical miles and carries 206. The smaller Dash 800 is closer in capacity to the XLR with seating at 252 for 3 class. but it offers too much range at 7,600 or so nautical miles. Engines A330neo uses the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 with a new 112-inch fan and architecture from the Trent 1000 TEN. Fuel burn is down 12% and thrust is up to 72,834 pounds. The A321XLR uses either two PW1400G or two CFM Leap 1As, with up to 33,110 pounds of thrust. Efficiency The A330 800 burns 5.45 kg per kilometer over 4,650 nautical miles, and the Dash 900 5.94 kg per kilometer. However, as the Dash 800 is a simple shrink with the same wings and engines but with much fewer seats, it suffers in seat cost at 2.75 litres per 100 km per passenger compared to 2.48 litres per 100 km per passenger of the Dash 900. The A321XLR burns virtually the same amount of fuel as the LR, with fuel burn per trip at 2.99 kg per kilometer and 2.43 litres per 100 km per passenger for 3 class 154 seat layout. So all in all, the A321XLR has the low trip cost and seat cost expected of a single hour. Cabins. Obviously, the wide body will have lower cabin altitude with higher cabin pressure and it's a quarter cabin as well. It also has more space and bigger bins, though to be fair, the new airspace cabins both feature the largest bins, the new mood lighting, and in typical configurations, both have comfortable 18-inch seats. Both also have the newest IFE and Wi-Fi. Now for the advantages and disadvantages. The A321 XLR has a lower trip cost which allows airlines to trial new routes. If the routes are successful though, it may be too small for the upper end of the middle of the market and it lacks cargo capacity. The A330-800 offers the right amount of cargo and passengers, but as it is a shrink of the Dash 900, it has additional range not needed which comes at the expense of cost per seat. The Dash 900 has a seat cost to complement the XLR, but is too large and is really going after the 787-9 on shorter routes. D 
re-rating the A330 NEOs wouldn't help as really while reducing thrust and takeoff weight to say 199 tons will increase maintenance cycles, lower takeoff and landing fees. That would be a de-optimized A330 NEO and would still have the heavy structure meant to fly long haul. The XLR has received well over 450, while both A330 NEO variants have received 332. So there we are. Really, in my view, the XLR serves the lower end of the middle of the market well, but the A330neo is more of a longer range wide body that has too high trip cost. Still, Airbus is the only one to offer a serious contender in the market segment currently, and the XLR will be a market opener. Thanks for tuning in and to meet next time, one team, one aviation, one skyhead. Thank you.